So hi guys, in this video I'm going to explain the logistics uh, of this uh, SQL course, basically what I did in order to get the data. Now if you're using another data set or if you're just downloading the data uh, from the links in the previous video and the links, I'm going to repeat the links in this video, you, don't, you, don't, you can skip this video. I'm just showing you the process I did to get that data. And first of all, obviously, I downloaded the data from here. Now here, what I found, but that could be only my personal experience, I found that this data often is not very reliable. I mean, for instance, today is Monday the 27th of April. I downloaded that data today. It was pretty limited to just a, a small set of 1,000. So it was a, today it's a very small file. I downloaded it a couple of days ago, it was a full file with 1.3 million uh, rows and I remember like last summer I downloaded it and it was like, you know, it had some errors in it and so on. So I don't know how reliable that, that file is, so it, it seems to vary day by day and um, what I also found that I tried to import that file with um, uh, Postgres and it just it just had it was like full of errors it, it, it just couldn't do it so what I did I started off with with um, oh first of all before I started off with DB browser for SQLite but before that I tried opening up in Excel and cleaning up a bit in Excel but the problem with Excel is that it modified some of the data sets for instance I give you an example uh, uh, I'm based in Germany and in Germany you have like, uh, for instance, if you have 23.2, for instance, for uh, amounts of fat in a certain food, that is converted automatically by Excel uh, to a date, 23rd of February. So it just messed up the whole data. So Excel was out of the question. So I, I went down to DB Browser for SQLite and what I did, I created, obviously created a new database and then I went to file and import a table from uh, from CSV file. Now I tried with the original table, you know, the one I downloaded, but that was that was first of all took ages, and second of all it had a lot of errors in there. So I decided to split it up. So I split up. First of all, I did small splits. I, I got myself a CSV splitter, and. Um, this is the interface of CSV splitter. What you do here, you give in the file name, the original file name, and then the output folder where you, where you want the splits to, to be saved. Um, so what I did, I took the uh, original file, I downloaded in here, did an output folder, and I fixed, uh, obviously you have to fix that, first row contains. You can decide whether to do that, I would advise to do that. And then I started off with 100,000. And 100,000 I could easily import in, uh, in uh, DB Browser for SQLite, no problems and no errors, nothing. So I just went up. So the next thing was like, next iteration was like 200,000 also went quite good. And then I went to 400,000, that went quite good. And then I tried 600,000 and there I stuck, you know, I, I hit some problems with errors and so on. So, but like I said, this was the instance that I downloaded. It seems to change every day. I, I'm, I have no affiliation with Open Food Facts, so I don't know what's happening to that CSV file. Um, anyways, I stuck then to the 400,000 and this is the one I, I imported here. And this, this, this is a pretty nifty program, a CSV splitter. You just, you just have those files and what you have in the, in the, in the output folder, you then have uh, all the, all the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the smaller chunks of the original big chunk. Right. So, and, and that's a table I, uh, what I got. I imported those 400,000 uh, rows that, that CSV splitter split for me, the first 400,000. And what, what uh, DB Browser for SQLite did, it just uh, created the whole structure automatically, everything as text. And obviously inserted the data. So in, in, now we can see here, we got like, uh, here at the bottom, you have like uh, three, around 400,000 rows. And that should be enough for our course. So that's why I stuck to that and didn't go any further. Now, the next step was to insert that data into um, into Postgres. And what I did, 
I went here and went to uh, export table as CSV file. Let me just click on that and um, uh, hold on. Export table as CSV file. And what I did, I took field separator, I put it as a semicolon because the original table had a, had a tab as a, as a delimiter. Uh, I put quote characters and uh, that didn't uh, change and then I've on OK. So I then exported the same data uh, from DB Browser for, for SQLite. So that was the next step. So then I had uh, generated a new CSV file, which is basically delimited with, with semicolons. And that, that's the file that I was to import or I, I, was, uh, I was importing into, um, put it this way, I plan to import into uh, Postgres. Now in Postgres, what you do, you have to create a table and the text, I'm, I'm going to post that, uh, the, the, the code for, for creating a table in Postgres. Uh, and here's the code. I mean, I had to basically generate all the fields manually. And that's, that's why, I, that's another reason why I use the DB Browser for SQLite. Because if you go back to Open Food Facts, and you see here, they tell you that these are the data fields in the database, but that information was not correct either. That's why I had problems importing the original data into uh, Postgres because in Postgres, I have to know in advance what kind of fields I have for that table in order to create that table before importing the CSV file. And uh, obviously that list was incorrect because it kept throwing errors. So that's why I imported it initially in uh, DB Browser because DB Browser did not need to know in advance the fields. Uh, you know, you just import the CSV and then, then you can see. And only this way I found out, oh, they're, they're at the back because here it, it ends. It ends with, um, with that stuff, uh, Nutrition Score UK. However, if you look at my code, uh, nutrition score UK is over here so those fields were not mentioned at all and I found those fields uh, just by uh, just by through through that import with the um, with SQLite with the DB browser for SQLite so so then what I did uh, I what I did in, in in Postgres I mean after installing Postgres what you do you just create a new database I mean this is now version 12 this is the newer version you just create a new database and then once you create a new database which i did here which i did here and um, then what i did is create a new table or basically you don't have to just call just call the query tool and in the query tool <clears throat> in the query tool just put in that code i'm posting that code in the in the download uh, below in the, in the sorry in the description below and if you run that code, it generates the table. And then the next piece of code that you need. So the next code, what you need is basically import the data. And that's the code. I'm posting that in the description below as well. So copy public. That's the name of the table. You can, if you called your table differently, then obviously that would be a different name. Then the path to the CSV file. Obviously that depends on where you have it and how you called your CSV. Now, if you're using the original CSV, insisting on using the original CSV, well, then you have to use this here, delimiter, uh, you know, escape character uh, tab, CSV, obviously uncommented. I mean, this is now just come, so it's going to be like this. Uh, let me cut this. Or if you're using the table I supplied, then you'd have to use the delimiter, which is a different delimiter, which is basically the semicolon. And then once you run that, it'll take a while and then you'd have all the data in your, in your database. And just to test whether you have all the data in your database, I mean, just, uh, just uh, let me just copy the table name. And then you just can uh, try select from, and then the table name, oops. And then that 
and then run it, you can run the code over here and that should return uh, the data set that you're looking for. And uh, you should get then the data down here. So if you got the data with that, then you're set to go and we, you can start with the course and um, or alternatively, if you use the, the uh, SQLite, you can use the same statement here and uh, you know call all the data. Mind you, mind you, um, the um, open food facts data. And if I call that, that uh, did I choose oh, open food facts? Uh, or so was there open? Oh, I am misspelled open. Uh, I'm gonna change that right and okay and then if I run that I should get the same you should get the same data in your SQLite uh, database if you're using SQLite so if you see this then obviously you have everything you're also here set to go with the course um, I'm uploading this database as well. The link is in the description below, as well as in the previous video. In the previous video, um, you can download that database. Either use that or export the data as CSV and then import it in any database engine you you of your preference. So if you're using MySQL or SQL Server or MariaDB, just use that uh, DB browser for SQLite. Go to um, file and export the table as a CSV file or the whole database as a, as a SQL file and then import that to your um, to your um, to your engine whatever database SQL database you're using um, so I think we should all be set to go and start with the real SQL work in the next video